Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Before we listen to the good news that God shares with us today, before we share the body and blood of the risen Christ, let us once again ask our loving God to forgive us our faults. You are our brother, the Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You shared life with us without sin. Christ, have mercy. You promised and sent the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of the God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, loving and gracious Creator, maker of everything that is good, who causes the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world of ours, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. We ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning the, their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods of your fathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt out of the state of slavery. He performed these great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the people through whom we passed. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. 
Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cher cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord. Now many of the Jesus' disciples who were listening said, this saying is hard and who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And so Jesus said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him or her by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied Jesus. Jesus then said to the twelve, What about you? Do you also want to leave? And Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. These prophets must have had a very, very difficult time in the time of before Christ. Like we heard a couple of weeks ago about Ezekiel and uh, Elijah and getting tired of preaching and being prophets. And today we have Joshua. And if we read in between the lines, he's very, very angry at the people, at the Israelites, because they were very, very unfaithful. They didn't know what to do, and they gave up their practices. They gave up the commandments, etc., and they went their own way. They went away from God. And, and so Joshua says, if you don't follow God, who are you going to follow? You see, the difficulty now with uh, good Pope, Pope Francis, he's doing an awful lot of writing. I think I'm into his fourth or fifth book right now and halfway through his encyclical. Um, he's having a tough time, and I heard on TV a couple of nights ago that his rating in the United States has gone down. Oh, so what, huh? So what? His, his rating is your rating will go down too if you stand up for Jesus Christ. You'll lose some friends if you decide to really, really talk about Christian values, huh? So who do we go to? And the problem with the people who are having a problem with Francis, Pope Francis, is that they're not following God. They're not following the Beatitudes. They're not following the commandments. And they can't relate. They can't relate to what Francis is talking about. And that's why they are having a difficult time because he's not going to shut up. Wait till he comes to the States in, what is it, September something, huh? So who do we really follow? It 
It's interesting in the gospel, I, I love this, this gospel because it tells us something about Jesus. It tells us something about God. They respect our free will. So Jesus says, that after people are walking away because he's talking about the Eucharist, then he turns to his disciples. Are you going to go away too? And Pete, of course, Peter jumps on him and says, oh, well, why should we go away? Huh? See, Jesus never calls us back and says, I'll explain it again. Huh? He doesn't do that. You know, I know what we should follow. We have a conscience. We have an understanding of God. So every now and then we get a little discouraged. We're like the prophets. We get tired, but we got to listen to the words of Joshua. If you don't follow God, then who are you going to follow? Let us profess our faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting, amen. A loving and gracious God, we thank you for sharing your word with us. We pray that we live by them. And now we ask you to listen to our words. Let us pray that we might make the choice to always be faithful followers of Jesus, who is the bread of life. That all members of the church choose to live as members of the body of Christ, nourished by the bread from heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the people of the world choose to live in a way that witnesses to their openness to the Spirit's guidance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are struggling with serious choices for their daily living be guided by the Spirit and come to peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we choose to live the Eucharist as a concrete expression of our believing in the risen Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for listening to us, O loving God. You so often call us your little children in the scriptures, and so like little children, we politely ask you to grant us an answer to all our requests that we make in the name of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Mm. and sisters, let us pray that our sacrifice today may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. For our good and the good of all his 
Holy Church. O gracious God, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on all of us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace and happiness in your church. We ask this through Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to our loving God. It is right and just. It is truly right. It is truly just. Our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received these fruits of your spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we sing. indeed holy, O gracious God. You are the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord and brother, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you, O gracious God, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Lord, remember your church, all the people of God spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all people called to ministry. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the realization of rising again, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to your home. We pray for ourselves. Have mercy on us all. We pray with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Mother Seton, member of this community, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be with them in eternal life and praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Let us pray the way Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from every evil. Grant us peace today that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you once said to your apostles, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Gracious God, complete within each and every one of us the healing work of your mercy, your compassion, and graciously perfect and sustain us 
so that in all things we may please you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended, so let us go to love and to serve one another. Thanks be to God. I'm certainly sure you appreciate the celebration of Mass and how much it means to you and means to so many in the community to be the heart of a worshiping community, to give praise to Christ. And so I ask you, uh, in your goodness, to continue your support and generous support of our television ministry here in the Diocese of Las Vegas. And may God bless you for your generosity.